Hello, it's Sean. Today I'm going to be playing the third scenario from the Prelude to Woodbury expansion for uh, The Walking Dead All Out War. Uh, in this scenario, Brian is our hero again. He is out looking for new recruits to fight in the arena, or to be chained up in the arena. So he has to collect four walkers from the board. Um, he needs to capture them and throw them in his truck. His truck broke down, so he actually has this uh, this nice minivan ice cream truck that he's going to use today. So he needs to get four walkers in there. Um, to be able to do that, he just needs to be... Uh, he must defeat a walker in melee. He can choose uh, not to count any headshots he scores in the melee and then that walker is uh, replaced with one of these tokens. This token will make noise in the end phase each turn. Um, so that is a little bit of a danger, but once he throws it into the, the van, then it won't make noise any longer. Um, he has to stay in contact with it, and while dragging the walker, Brian may only make, uh, may only move at a sneak, uh, and may only defend in melee. Uh, excuse me, it's not in the end phase, it's the start of every event phase. After checking kill zones, the captured walkers make noise. So, we'll get started. Brian does have some equipment this time. He has a Beretta 92, uh, which gives him a, a white die an additional white die and uh, for shooting combat. Um, he has a leather jacket that he can discard that leather jacket to ignore the damage he receives in a single round of melee. He has a kitchen knife. Um, he can re-roll one die per melee attack. So that's kind of nice. And he has some bandages that he can discard at the end of the action to restore one health point lost earlier in the game. So, as normal, we have, uh, if you get to 18 threat, we lose, and if Brian is killed, we lose. Uh, he wins if he gets those four tokens into the vehicle. Uh, he wins automatically, so doesn't have to, like, drive away or anything. As soon as he gets that fourth one in there, he will win. We'll see if that happens. The book says this is a more, um, difficult scenario than the previous two, and I lost those, so we'll see how this works out. Alright, well let's get started. So first up, Brian gets to take some actions, and I think that we are just going to have him step forward. He's going to stay in contact with the truck, or the van, and he is going to make noise, which is going to cause this guy, because he's the closest, to move into him. Um, so that is his two actions. The event phase. There's nobody in kill zones, because he's already there. They're outside. Um, so we'll draw an event card. turning this around so you can see it on the camera. So we have the event of Rummers. Uh, on the all quiet and low threat, move one eligible walker towards the nearest survivor. So, who is closest? These are probably both pretty close to the same distance away. Nope, he's further away, so this one's going to move. Walker will shamble straight towards him. Not quite get him, but he's awful close. And that is the event. Now we will in the melee phase. Uh, we do have 
one combat, so we'll tick the threat up to one. We'll tick the threat up one space to two. Um, so, Bran and Melee gets one white. The walker, since there's only one, has one red, and I will roll these together. Uh, Brian does get a reroll of his white die, and he lost, so he's going to reroll, and he still lost, so that's no good. Um, so he took he took a wound and is bitten, and I actually think that I'm going to I don't want to be bitten, so I'm going to go ahead and burn that leather jacket. So I'm not bitten because I don't want to have to be rolling every turn for that. So maybe a bad idea, but we'll see. So I can't push back, so he'll push back because I'm against the vehicle. Um, nobody is prone. So we will tick threat up in the end phase because it's a solo game. So, next turn, Brian doesn't like that I've got, that he's got two walkers sitting right there on top of him, so he is actually gonna, uh, you're within 10, you're within 10, if I shoot my gun they're all gonna come running at me. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to try to hold the nerve. So we get to roll one black die and on a shield I get to reduce the threat by one. I do. And then Brian is going to make a move. He's actually going to run. Um, and he's going to go six, two. And then the closest walker will move towards him, and that will be this guy. And that is his activation phase. We will draw in the event phase now. We're going to take threat up by one. We drew the hunger. We're still in the all quiet, so the walkers suddenly stop and nothing else happens, which isn't too bad. So in the melee phase, we're going to take threat up one because we have a combat. And the walker has one white die, and Brian has one, excuse me, the walker has one red die, Brian has a white die. So we're going to roll to see what happens here. And it's a tie, and I win ties. So, we're going to bundle that walker up, and I got a captured walker. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get it into the van very easily, but we will try. Um, in the end phase, we don't have anything to do except for tick the threat up one because it's a solo game. So back to the action phase. Um, first we're going to try to hold the nerve, because I don't want the threat to get out of hand here. So I'm going to roll one die. On a shield, I get a reduced threat by one. And that is a shield, so I get a reduced threat. And I'm going to sneak, because that's all the faster I can go. So Brian is sneaking towards his van to throw that walker into it. And that is his two actions. 
Um, we're going to draw for the event phase. I guess first in the event phase, there's nobody in the kill zone, so we don't have to do that. And then we have distracted. We are in the low threat, so move one eligible walker in a direction of your choice. And any time it says that in a solo game, you get to move it. Actually, I don't think that's right, because this is a solo specific. So they're distracted, so I guess I get to have this guy walk away. So we're going to have him shamble right over here. And that's very helpful. All right. Um, yeah. And the end phase. Nobody's bitten, no walkers are prone, so we don't have to do that. We're going to tick the threat up by one. And this guy is going to make noise. So the closest walker is going to come towards me. And this is the closest walker. He's going to move straight towards me. And he's going to bump into that piece of scenery. So... That is the end phase. So back to the action phase. We have Brian. And he is going to... So he can sneak and he'll get into contact with the vehicle. And I believe you automatically throw that in there as soon as you're in contact. Let me check. He has to use an action to push the walker into the vehicle. So his second action will be to put that walker into the vehicle. Well, I got one so far. That's not too bad. Um, and that's his two actions for the turn. However, he is now within her kill zone. Well, yeah, he is. So that walker is going to move towards him. And it looks like... Yeah, it's close enough. They're going to get into combat. And we'll draw an event card. Roamers. And we're still in the, the low threat. So move one eligible walker towards the nearest survivor. So that is the guy that's going to move. He's already in contact with that piece of scenery. So he's going to go three, four. And then he'll move one, two, boop, doo. Alrighty. So, we're going to tick Threat up because we have a combat. Same thing, one die for each of us. The white die is for Brian. Brian wins that combat. So, he is going to knock that down and turn it into a, a captured zombie. I mean, captured walker. In the end phase, there is no no actions, um, but that walker is going to make noise, which is going to draw this guy in. So he is going to move forward in the end phase. No, not in the end phase. They make noise in the event phase. So I'm not going to do that. So, threat ticks up because it's a solo game. And on to the action phase. Well, Brian's already standing right here, so he's going to go ahead and throw this zombie into the vehicle. That's two captured so far. And he is going to hold the nerve. So he's going to try to reduce threat a little bit because it's getting high. And he does hold the nerve again, so we'll tick that down. And that is his two actions. And in the event phase, he is outside of the kill zone, so we don't have to worry about that. We're going to draw an event. 
threat goes up one, and it's too quiet. The walkers suddenly stop, and nothing seems to happen. Add one to the threat. So, two threat, you just got added right there, which isn't any good, but that's all right. And I was actually hoping that somebody would move into me because I could fight him. And I'm already right next to the vehicle, but that's okay. We will worry about that in a minute. Uh, so that's the end of the event phase. There is no melee. So we move on to the end phase. There is nothing going on there, so we just tick the threat up one. And we are in medium threat now. So Brian is going to try to hold... Hold the, the nerve, and his nerve is medium. So I think you have to roll panic whenever threat is above your nerve. Yeah, when the threat level is higher than a survivor's nerve. So he is in a medium nerve, we're in the medium threat, so he does not need to roll only once we get into the, the high threat. So. Uh, he's going to try to hold the nerve and reduce that threat down to low. And he does roll. He's doing a lot better today of holding that, that nerve down. Uh, it's his first action. His next action is going to be... He's just going to make noise and that's going to draw this guy into him. And... That is the end of the action phase. Uh, the event phase. There is no kill zone. Nobody within a kill zone. So we're going to draw the event. Threat goes up by one. And now we're in the medium threat. So we're going to look at that. We're going to roll a blue die and move that many eligible walkers toward the nearest survivor. So depending on what we roll here, it might get us some more walkers on the board. So I rolled two. He's already engaged, so he's not eligible. That one is eligible. Uh, so I've only got one on the board, so I'll add a walker. And I'm going to add that walker. Add that walker right here. Uh, but he won't move. This walker is going to shamble forward. Six. Uh, I'm going to actually put that guy back here. Alright. And that is the end of the event phase. We're going to have melee, so we have a combat, so we're going to take that threat up. We're at 10 now. We're going to have this fight here. And we are tied, but I can re-roll. So I'm going to do that and hopefully get a better roll. And I got a worse roll, so that's unfortunate. So I lost by one, so I'm going to take a wound. He's going to push back because uh, I can't be pushed back because I have train behind me. So that didn't go how I wanted, but that's all right. Doing okay so far. Um, in the end phase... Nobody's bitten, nobody's prone. So we're going to increase threat by one. Starting to get a little scary. And we will start the next turn. So I think Brian is going to he's going to hold the nerve. Yeah, he's going to try to hold the nerve again. And again, I tick that down. Keeping that nerve under, or the threat under control. Um, and my second activation, I'm going to move this way. I want to be out of reach of this. I really can't. So I'm just going to make noise. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to make noise. It's going to draw this feller in. 
that is the his two actions and the event phase nobody is within a kill zone so we don't have to do that we're going to draw a card frayed nerves and we are in medium threat so one model with lower medium nerve on the player of the player's choice creates mayhem if there are no eligible models add one to the threat level um So I guess you could probably cause mayhem while you're engaged. I don't know that for sure, but it makes sense. So threat's going to go up because we just caused mayhem. That's going to draw this walker in. And that walker is out of 10 inches, so they won't move. So that just got a little scary for Brian, having two walkers to fight now. So, we're going to go to the melee phase, and I think at this point he is actually going to shoot a, uh, shoot a, uh, one of the walkers in the melee. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot at that walker right there. I will have two white die, and he has one red die to defend. And... Hopefully I'll be able to put him down. Um, it's tied, which that means nothing happens. So that's <laughs> that's no good for them, or no good for him. So in the melee now, oh, I gotta up the threat because that caused mayhem. He's outside of ten inches, so he won't move. And. So, the only thing I can do is defend. I have two red dice for defend. Because there's two walkers, they have three red dice for attacking. So I'm going to roll their attacks first. And they got one hit on me. And I get to defend with two red dice. And I got one as well. But that means I win. Because I win ties. So we're going to push both of them back, but they're not knocked down because it's just a tie. I didn't win. And again, normally I'd be pushed back, but I can't be because I'm up against the vehicle. Um, and I think, I don't think I bumped this because there was a combat. Maybe I'm hurting myself, but that Molly, I think, uh, I don't think I moved it up, so... All right, well, that's the end of that. Now we have the end phase. Nothing really going on except for threat ticks up one. So now we're in high threat, which means I'm going to have to roll for nerve. So my first action, I guess I have to roll for nerve before I take an action. Um... So we're going to roll the yellow dice to see what what Brian does, because he is panicking. And I believe that's uh, make noise. He's going to scream, perform the make noise action, then take one more action as normal, then advance the threat by one. Super. Alright, well, they look pretty much the same spacing. So he's going to move in. We're going to advance the threat by one because that's what it says. And he can't make any other actions because he's engaged in melee. So he is done with his turn. Um, and we will do the event phase. And clearly within the kill zone, so he's going to move in. I think this just went bad for Brian. Pandemonium. We're going to add one to the threat, so we're at 16 now. And we're in high threat, so we're going to do what that says. Move every eligible walker towards the nearest survivor, and then two blue dice of walkers enter play. Wow. So, he is going to walk forward and bump into that piece of train right there. 
and then I'm going to roll two blue die and have that many new walkers join or roll onto the table. And we have four walkers coming onto the table. One, two, three, four. And I'm just spreading them around a little bit. So, that is the event phase. Now we have Uh, we have the melee phase, so we're going to take thread up one. I am going to shoot again because I don't think I can win this combat. Ooh, that's really risky because, well, if I shoot, I automatically lose because the threat goes to 18. So I guess I'm not going to shoot. So I will just fight these guys. They're going to have three white die. Um, I think I lose either way, because no matter what, I'm going to take up the threat in the uh, end phase. So I'm going to fight. They get three red, and I get one white. And it's a tie, so that means I win. So they both get pushed back. And I think I can bundle up one of them. Again, I don't think this is going to matter. And in the end phase, we take the threat up to 18, and Brian loses because the threat went too high. So, started out pretty well for Brian, but then he got kind of caught up by two walkers, and he lost the edge and failed to, uh, to get all four walkers. He did get two in there, and he's got a third one that he just captured, so that's kind of... Nice, he almost achieved his goal, but I guess he's got to run away now because it's just kind of gotten out of hand. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. And if you uh, want to see more videos like this and the other projects that I work on, you can subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.